have a DMP and leave a comment in the, <laughs> in the comment section. Welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for tuning in to watch. If you're new here, Nabzara is the name. I create content around food, travel, and lifestyle in Uganda. Thank you so much for clicking to watch. Please subscribe down below, join the community. I'll appreciate it so much. So, about two years ago, I did a video on the Kabaka's Palace, the Kabaka of Uganda, the Kingdom Palace in Lubiri. And that video has gotten surprisingly very many views by then i was filming with a phone and i've been wanting to come back and do another video hopefully more detailed but with higher quality of course with a camera i'm here now with a couple of other creators i don't know if you see them right there we are from doing a kampala walking tour and this is the last place we are checking hopefully you've watched the kampala tour video I'll link it up here if you've not i want to separate this video so that i put in as much detail as for you guys yeah, we're just waiting on our tour guide so that I give you the tour of this place. official residence for the king of Uganda. It is called Tuekobe. Mm. Tuekobe simply means let's get together, meaning the different clans of Uganda came together and they established a palace for their king. Uh, this is the main palace of the king and at the same time only three kings have stayed here. It was established in 1885. That was during the time of the reign of Kabaka Mwanga II. Uh, later on, Kabaka Manga was arrested by the British and then exiled. When he was exiled, his youngest son, who was called Kabaka Dawood, at the age of one, became a king and he couldn't be a, uh, take over the entire powers because he was too young to take over the kingdom. So they had to select a team of elders that would advise this young king in, uh, in the governing of this kingdom. Not until when he met the ages when they thought that he was ready to take over. So by then it was at this permanent palace like you see. This new establishment you see here was established in 1922 to 1933. That was still during the time of Kabaka uh, the II. That was after him visiting Europe and then he got to see the modern architecture. So he came back with such kind of design and then this was established here. And that means this was the first permanent palace or the first modern palace to be established here in Uganda. Uh, at the same time, when Kabaka Daudi Chua died or disappeared around 1939, then his son, Kabaka Mutesa II, was made a king. And when he, when, he, when he was made a king, he also stayed here. But later on, Uganda got independence after getting independence, then he was made the first president of Uganda. Uh, 1966, he got some misunderstandings with the prime minister, who was Milton Obote. And what happened was, Obote ordered his uh, army commander, who was Idi Amin, to attack this palace and kill the, the and kill the king. But fortunately, the king managed to jump over his face. He ran and hid into Lubanga Cathedral, then later ran to exile in England, where he disappeared in 1969. So when he disappeared, he did not; his body was not brought back to Uganda because it was still during the time of of uh, Milton Obote, and not until 1971, when Obote was overthrown by Idi Amin, and then the king's remains were brought all the way from exile 
brought here to Uganda and buried at Kasubi Royal Tombs. So this palace, after the attack on it in 1966, it was made a military barracks and that meant that the Baganda people or the Buganda Kingdom had no control over anything here, not until 1994 when this kingdom was fully given back to the Uganda Kingdom and that's when even the current king was uh, colonized on the throne and currently the king has been on the throne for 27 years, almost making 28. Uh, what you see here is a cannon which was left here as a sign to show that this palace was once used as a military barracks mm. and this is one of the ten cannons that were given to Idi Amin by the late Colonel Muhammad Gaddafi. Then we're able to see the cars. There is a Cadillac, a Daimler and a Rolls Royce. Uh, those were king's cars that were destroyed when this palace was attacked in 1966. Uh, the remains you're seeing, some of them were undug from the underground because they were buried by Milton Obote because of the head he had on the king. So, Rubudo Runo, Ruina, in Tawetua Bidi, and so Kanga Yenu and Oansu, Edina Mainja Anna, and then I really want to worry in Gala Jesus being in the same. We are told about the mile, they call it the Royal Mile. If I may explain it a bit more, it's a straight road from the palace to the parliament. So the royal mile was put so that the king does not have to choose any other routes to go to the parliament when he's going for his duties. So there is a straight road going through the roundabout, by the way, guys. Before the parliament, there is a roundabout, but the king does not take corners to go, to go around the roundabout, okay? There are gates. The reason that they constructed it to benefit him, so there are gates. He did simply open them when he's passing through and then he uses a straight route straight from the palace to the royal mile. No, to the parliament through the royal mile. I feel like that's really amazing. So guys, we're done with the uh, part of the palace. I know the disappointing thing about visiting the palace is that you don't get to go inside. I remember the first time I came, I was so excited. I thought we'd be late inside. No way. And it's the same thing this time around. You just get into the compound, but you don't get to enter into the house. Along the Royal Mile, there are totems <laughs> So they were put along the mile, the Royal Mile in sculpture form I'm going to be showing you guys, we are starting with the elephant Guys, this is the elephant for the elephant clan The Njogu clan This is the Luganda one Uh, guys, this is the Ngari clan. In English, it's called the Crested Crane. Guys, this one is the Mpindi clan. I bet did Mpindi leave a comment in the, <laughs> in the comment section. But anyway, that's it. That's all we've learned today from the Kawakas Palace. Uh, we've also done about the torture chambers. I don't know if you guys have ever been there. It, the first time I came, it was a bit scary, but it's not that scary anymore. Um, the tour fees we were charged five k each since we are Ugandans. I'm not sure how much they charge foreigners. I'll ask around and put the fee here. That's it for the video. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll see you in another video.